we are the last two people that you should be listening to. <laughs> that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Cue, so. cue Helen Mirren going in on voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she did. Yeah. Like, Margot Robbie, uh, these words hold no meaning when they come out of Margot Robbie's mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I will say before we like praise the movie to death, I, I do want to introduce this. I, I do think at the end of the day, it is a bit of a messy film. Okay. I, I think the story is a little uneven. Overall, I really like it, but I think there's the story is trying to do so much and trying to pay off every single character storyline right. to the point that they almost take shortcuts to like at the end of the film they're at the end of the film I I did kind of bristle at just the movie almost like int- had every character come forth and announce to us the audience what their character arc was kind right. of in a way it was kind of like and this barbie you have been doing this in, a, in, a, in a america america's um character and, and the mother and daughter they kind of like pitch, like shoehorned in a character arc for them you know like, yeah. oh I, we understand each other now and yeah and, and well, ken you there was you some of that barbie and there were so many characters that some of the resolutions felt a little unearned y- yes that's what i'm saying is right. I, I think they kind of took a shortcut at the end to get some of these characters their arc yeah for the sake of giving them an arc um that you know part of me was like okay like but the the big main targets were hit and hit so well that Mm -hmm. it didn't really take away from the film well and so much of that too i just chalked up to like this is a comedy right and i'm on the like you've got me now i'm on the ride i will allow like I'm not going to be such a stickler about the reality of how everything is because yeah. it is so the way that the movie kind of grabs you and is like, yeah, we're in Barbie land where everything is kind of immaculate and perfect. And then she goes to the real world and it's, it, I just feel like through the course of the movie, I am on board. Yes. So it, it kind of grabs you and the way that the movie does that allows for some of those things to yeah. slip by because I, I'm invested and I can accept that like, Oh, that's just the way that they wrote that. And yeah. It's unearned a little bit, but yeah, you know? Yeah. No, again, I, like I said, like the big targets, what the movie's trying to accomplish. And, and for me, that's anytime I'm trying to assess a movie, I'm trying to identify what is the movie trying to accomplish and did it accomplish that? I'm not trying to compare it to another movie or how well it did compared to this movie. Right. You judge it by its own terms, by its own goals. And I, I just felt like, okay, some of the character stories, a little rushed, n- not uh, not enough, too many cooks in the kitchen sort of thing. But the right. main ones really worked. And when you just focus on Barbie and Ken and their, their journeys, I, I think really worked. And for me, and, and I, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this, is... Mm-hmm. I see this as Greta's third coming of age story um, yeah. because I saw what she was doing with Ken and Barbie almost as an Adam and Eve coming into adulthood journey Yeah, where just like a lot of scholars see the story of Adam and Eve as a story as um, kind of pre-consciousness coming into consciousness, going from naivety to the nuance of everyday life mm-hmm. and the complexity of good and evil, right? Yeah. You know, you live in paradise, you're born in paradise, you don't have to distinguish between good and evil, you don't know you're naked, and then something happens, right? Eating of the apple, you're gaining knowledge, and sure. then the harsh realities of the world come in where, okay, well now you got to take care of the earth and blah, 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 and there's going to be pain and suffering mm-hmm. because you chose to decide good and evil. Where you see Barbie and Ken in Barbie land. It's perfect. It's hard. You know, oh, yeah, there's it's paradise. There's yeah. no there's no harm, danger. There's no even real food. And then all of a sudden, Barbie starts thinking about death. She starts getting sour milk and things don't really work. And she's running into conflict for the first time. And I see all of that as just another way to comment on a child coming into adulthood, which I thought was great for a movie about Barbies because what's one of the things most young women and you know some young boys encounter when they're a kid barbie 
And then what do they let go of as they become adults? They let go of Barbie. And mm. there's this transition of letting go of the childish, childish things and encountering the harsh realities of adulthood. And I thought that was an interesting thing to do with a childhood toy is to like the kids who play with her. How does Barbie wrestle with the complexities of everyday life and going from a naive kind of not conscious being to conscious of suffering and pain and evil and hardship? How do you traverse that? And I thought that was in line with their previous two films. Yeah. To me, I, I do think you and I have kind of two separate reads on the movie. And I see what you're talking about. And I think that that's an interesting idea. But to me, the whole movie centers around that park scene. And mm. I hate to harp on it. The but, park scene. But I think the scene where she's sitting in the park and she's looking and seeing everyone in relationships, happy and then she sees two people in a relationship and they're fighting mm -hmm. and someone else is by themselves and they're depressed and uh there's an elderly woman next to her on the bench and and she's like seeing that the real world holds like happiness and sorrow and that when we're together with people that can be joyful, but it can also be the opposite. And so it's like, I feel like she's seeing that, that in the real world, there's all these complexities and all these nuances and that it is, it is beautiful, but it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I feel like the whole movie kind of centers around that idea that, um, that if you're, a woman watching the movie and that's the perspective that you're coming in with that being a woman is like beautiful and it's difficult or being a person on earth, like trying to relate to people around you or like find your own identity so that you're not leaning on Barbie all the time for your fulfillment. It's like, it's a beautiful thing, but it's extremely difficult. And so it's like, I kind of felt like mm -hmm. the whole movie centers around that for me where well, it's, I think we're saying the same thing. Is that right? Because, yeah, because Barbie goes from a world where there's no nuance and the world yeah. is one thing. Mm -hmm. Everything's one color in Barbie land, which is yeah. everything's amazing. Yeah. You know, we're all doctors. We're all entrepreneurs. We're all business women. And there's nothing wrong. And then she finally experiences tension in the world where it's like, oh, I have cellulite. Yeah. I'm thinking, what is death? I'm scared about death. And so when she goes to the real world, she does look around and she sees that the real world adulthood does also have the beauty of Barbie land, but it has the conflict mm -hmm. and it has the, the tension, but her response to it isn't to maintain that oh, it must be one thing. I think Barbie's lesson, which she hints that in that scene, but then at the end accepts is that yeah. if you try and hold on to the childish notion that the world must be one thing, whether that be great or evil or bad, yeah, but you embrace the full nuance of everything that it is terrible at times and it is hard at times and that's okay and you don't have to insist on extraordinary existence oh man i love that what you said about everything being one color because yeah you know it's like when you're in paradise and when you're growing up everything is one color exactly that's everything is black and white or everything is adult. yeah yeah everything is this one sound or this one note. And then as you grow up, you realize just like there are all these different notes. There are all these different ways that things can go. Uh, and that's okay. And that's what yeah, America, that's, that's what, okay. Yeah. That's what America's speech is saying is like women have to almost have to maintain this idea of, even though we're scared, we're nervous, we're mad at each other. We're bickering at each other. Everything still has to look like everything it's, has to be that one color. And America's yeah. saying, no, it's okay that that there are days where you're not extraordinary mm -hmm. and i think barbie's lesson is that uh, to be an adult to be to go from the childish world of barbie to the full technicolor world of adulthood is to accept that it doesn't have to be one thing all the time you guys ever think about dying that's why it's a little bit frustrating to me when people 
that haven't seen the movie talk about it because yeah. I think that what a controversial message that they is. just don't realize. Yeah. That it's like, it's the message of the movie is very universally good. Like it's, it's a really good message. And, uh, I just hate to think that people are missing out on, yeah. uh, on something just because, because the one color that they see when they watch the trailer, or see the, yeah. The marketing or whatever it is. Before we leave. <laughs> okay. Can we just be honest though? Like when you're watching Barbie land and you see that like the kins are just kind of like, oh. you kind of, they're kind of like pushed to the side and that is kind of sad, but also I was like, they don't really have jobs and they're just like hanging out. I was like, that kind of looked kind of nice. It, I'll be honest with you. It's I like, definitely thought that seems awesome. I was like, Ken doesn't have to drive to the bank at, at 530 like, in the morning low-key complaining about how little he has to do and i was like i would kill up, i would kill if my job was beach it's like ken shut up dude dude andrew you don't you know would, what you're asking for andrew you would be dead if your job was beach i know I, because i'm too pale <laughs> you would burn to death i just, i know i was just like ken you don't know what you're asking for yeah you don't want that you don't want that responsibility man no you don't man just shut up just be a good man and shut up <laughs> And listen. Yeah. If that's if that's the only takeaway you get from this discussion, let that be it. Yeah. If you're a man, shut up and listen, and I'll, and look good while you're doing it. Yeah. It's not too much to ask. Yeah. Do a sit up. Take a shower. <laughs> I thought you. I heard take a sh. I thought you were gonna say something else. No. Take a shower. And also the other one. And the other one too. You know what we're talking about. Yeah. It's good to cleanse out. Here. Wink, wink. Colon. Yeah. We should probably end this. Yeah. I was gonna say we should probably land the plane. <laughs> It's been like a month since we recorded, so we're a little rusty. Yeah, we're catching up. But I can cut it off at any moment. Yeah, that's true. All right. All right well, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, be on the lookout for Oppenheimer, baby. All right. See ya. Night. <laughs>